this is this is the this is the uh, uh, the R9 Nano for size comparison. This is a Mini ITX motherboard. Awesome. Right? Uh, also, just to to grind things in a little bit, this does have a Core i7 6700K in it. This is a Z170i. Uh, MSI motherboard, mini ITX mother motherboard, the first Skylake mini ITX motherboard. And you can see if you install uh, this GPU in here, you then have uh, what is essentially like probably the highest performance or almost the highest performance small form factor machine that you could possibly really have here. Uh, and, you know, get a riser card out of Man, this. I was going to say, uh, yeah, 90 degree it, angle uh, riser card on that. I like want that. that. Yeah. yeah, that would be pretty good. No, let's do it that way. Yeah, I think we can make that happen. So uh, the R9 Nano, it is a full Fiji GPU, the same shader count, texture count, memory size, memory speed as the Radeon Fury X, but it runs at a lower clock speeds. If you look through our review, we can actually quantify what those lower clock speeds are now. So while the Fury X runs at 1,050 megahertz and it pretty much runs at that the whole time, uh, this card, it doesn't have a water cooler, um, it, using an air cooler. It's a vapor chamber cooler, so it's a fairly advanced air cooler. Mm -hmm. But it, uh, it runs anywhere from, in my testing, we saw average clock speeds as low as 830 megahertz but, and as high as like 960 megahertz, just depending on the game and depending right. on the resolution. You run at 4K, it's going to run a little bit lower clocks than it does at 25 by 14. Why does it do that? Because it is sticking inside a 175-watt thermal limit. Right, so if you look at the connection right. here, you only got one eight-pin power connector, um, and it has a TDP of 175 watts out of the box, uh, and it basically adjusts the clocks to maintain mm -hmm. that thermal threshold. Uh, you can go into Catalyst Control Center, you can over, you can kind of overclock it by adjusting that power limit, and you will draw more power, and you will run at higher clocks, and thus have better performance at the expense of more noise from your fan, more heat being generated inside of. Uh, more than likely incredibly small case. Um, right. One other thing worth noting just in terms of physical design, this has three DisplayPort connections and one HDMI, so no DVI, and that HDMI port is only HDMI 1.4a. It is still not HDMI 2.0. So even though, hmm. uh, in theory, this could have been one of the best, if not the best, home theater PC graphics cards without HDMI 2.0, it's kind of hard to, to make that recommendation. AMD tells us that there will be uh, active DisplayPort to HDMI 2.0 adapters available relatively soon, but mm. I haven't seen it. I haven't seen it, haven't tested it. Uh, don't know how much they're going to cost. My guess is not exceptionally inexpensive. Um, let's talk about a couple of things on the card. Performance-wise, this is within 5 to 10%, maybe even like, four to seven percent of the amd radeon fury the full length really? card and it's within 15 percent, 10 to 15 percent of the amd fury x so this is a high fairly high performance video card that's um, impressive all things being equal yeah and that's on 25 by 14 and that's at 4k um and it does so uh it's a little bit louder it the fan movement is there uh also this card has coil wine it has uh PWM, kind of like an inductor-based vibration sound that comes uh, in the comes when when you're playing a game. You know, higher frame rates, you have a higher pitch sound. Lower frame rates, you have a lower pitch sound. If you, if you've been around GPUs for a long time, you've probably heard coil mm -hmm. wine from time to time. This card has that exceptionally badly. Um, mm. It is less noticeable than I expected it to be when installing this in a case, right? On an open test bed with it sitting. Like basically from here to here, it was awful, right? Um, Ouch. And it was immediately noticeable. When we put it in a case, we put it in like a Cooler Master CM110, which is a mini ITX mm -hmm. case that will support full-size graphics cards. And by the, when you add in the air movement of this fan and you add in the air movement of your CPU fan and the case fan, it starts mm -hmm. to drone it out. We did a recording. If you watch our video review, you'll see um, we actually do kind of like a A, B test of... Right. Uh, here it is with the AMD uh, Radeon R9 Nano installed, and here it is with the NVIDIA GeForce GTX 970 uh, Mini, Mini ITX mm -hmm. card um, from Asus. And you can, they're both kind of loud, right? Uh, but we're not looking to measure loudness. We were looking to measure what the tone was and what the, what the I don't know, what the texture of the sound might be. Uh, and you can definitely tell a, a difference when you, when you do that. Um, what else? I mean, it's... 
it's it's a pretty good card. Like, I mean, it's uh, expensive. I guess if we should talk about that next, it's six hundred and fifty bucks. So it's the mm -hmm. same price as the Fury X. It's a hundred dollars more than the Fury. Um, it's about the same price of a nine eighty Ti, right? But you have to keep in mind that this is a six inch graphics card, which is this is kind of an interesting comparison. This is a GTX seven fifty Ti that I happen to have sitting there by the off uh, by the test bed. You can kind of see like the PCB lengths are very similar. The Nano is just a little bit little bit longer, uh, but this mm -hmm. card. You know, being a very power efficient, I think this was a 75 watt TDP card. This is mm -hmm. 175 watts, so it's obviously a different beast. Uh, but the compactness of this is really, really impressive. Um, right. It's not a card for everybody, though. And, and, I, and I feel like that needs to be made abundantly clear. If you have room for a full size graphics card, a 10 inch, 11 inch graphics card, do not buy this. Right? You can get the same performance a little bit more and buy like an AMD Fury or a GTX 980 right? and actually save money while you do right. it as well. If you are somebody who has been eyeing a particular case that requires you to have a small form factor graphics card, but you don't want to sacrifice on GPU performance, this is your best option. The best option from NVIDIA is uh, there's a MSI and an ASUS GTX 970 mini ITX offering. Uh, but they are, they're significantly less expensive first, but they're significantly lower performance as well, anywhere from 30 to 40% lower performance. So this Got is, it. a, it's an interesting product. It's kind of like, it's a niche for a mini ITX build. And then it's a niche of that niche to be in a mini ITX build that needs a very small graphics card. Um, and... I don't know. I think AMD is kind of doing a smart thing by like not selling this for $450 or not selling it for $550 because they're going to sell out of it anyway. I really believe that. <laughs> like they're having enough trouble getting Fiji GPUs out and about and sure. HBM production is kind of, it's kind of difficult uh, based on all we're hearing. So, you know, take this, they're kind of defining a new classification of card, which is a super high performance, but very small form factor design. It's made possible by their move to HBM instead of GDDR5 memory. Um, and price it and market it as a uh, enthusiast class, kind of like a uh, part that, you know, you want to strive to own. Um, there's going to be a lot of people that are going to complain about the pricing on it, and it's completely justified to do that. But... Right. If you have room for a different card, don't buy it. Um, I mean, that, <laughs> that I mean, it's, 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 it's pretty blunt, right? Like, if you have room for a different card, like, don't buy it. You could buy an AMD or an NVIDIA. I don't really care. But don't buy this one. This one is for right. people that have a very specific use case in mind. Like, case modders that are kind of do, trying to do something very specific um, mm -hmm. while still being able to drive 4K displays and get good frame rates at high resolutions. We'll, we'll find a lot of reasons to like this card as well. Uh, I think it'll be interesting to see how all that, uh, that, that pans out. And then it is actually available today and for sale based on uh, looking around Amazon and Newegg, which is a welcome change after the Skylake release that you can relate to. So not me. Yeah. I'm not bitter about that at all. Uh, <laughs> so props to the nano. Uh, mm -hmm. delivering the goods. Um, and yeah, I think Ryan made it abundantly clear. If you have space for a bigger card, buy the bigger card and get more performance for less money. 